Jesus went Thank you, Lord. to Calvary yeah. to yeah. save a wretch like you and me. Not love. Nothing, nothing, nothing but love. That's love. They hung him high. Yeah, they did. They stretched him wide. Yes. He hung his head. And then he died. That's love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah. That's love. That's love. That's love. And that's not how. Whoo, tell the us. Story. Tell the story. Tell the story. Three days later, he rose. Jesus went Where? to Calvary Why? to save a wretch like who? Like you and me. That's, that's love. 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 They hung him high. Yes, they did. They stretched him wide. Yeah. He hung his head. Yeah. That's love. Yeah, yeah, that's love. That's love. And that's not how it does quit the right story there. ends. Three days later, Three days. he rose again. That's love. With all power, all might. Yeah. That's love. Come on, let's sing it. Let's sing it. If you didn't know the day, God loves you. <laughs> and he has offered a wonderful plan for your yeah. life. He loves you in spite of you. In spite of your meanness, in spite of your conditions. Let me tell you, he loves you Hallelujah. if no one else loves you. He showed it over 2,000 years ago. The songwriter says they hung him high. He says they stretched him wide. The songwriter declares, for you and me, he hung Thank his head. Jesus. Thank you. And he concludes, oh, there's no greater love. Than oh, thank God for Jesus. Thank God. A happy Resurrection Sunday. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God for Hallelujah. Jesus. I said, Happy oh, Resurrection Sunday. Hey, hey. It's a Christian's hot day. If you can't get excited about this day, yes, you better check yourself before you wreck yourself. Hallelujah. It is the day that Christians all over the world are celebrating that getting up morning. Hallelujah. Oh, that third day morning. Yes, he rose with all power. Hallelujah. Early that third day morning. Hallelujah. Before the rooster could grow. Early that third day morning. He got up with all power. 
Before Pilate could change after God, he rose with all power. While the dew was yet on the ground, he, he got up early that third day morning. Let me tell you, he rose just for you and just for me. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah. The righteous Lamb of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Thank you, Jesus. There's none like him. He is the conquering king of Calvary. His name is Jesus, the righteous Lamb of God. There is nothing like him. There's no one like him. There's none to be compared to him. His name is Jesus. Buddha cannot compare to him. Muhammad can't compare to him. Confucius can't compare to him. Aristotle can't compare to him. There's no God like our God. His name is Jesus. Your dress code can't compare to him. Your new car can't compare to him. Your luxurious house can't compare to him. There is none like him. His name is Jesus. And he loves us so much until he voluntarily gave his life as a ransom for you and for me. That's good news this morning. That's good news. I said that's good news. I mean, as mean as you can be, he died for you. Hallelujah. If Big Mama was here, she would say, as trifling as you are, he died for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Ah, oh, thank God the story didn't end there. Three days. Three days later. Brother Miles, Brother Miles had a good time this morning. The women had a good time this morning. The men just sat and looked as they attacked the brother. Brother Miles says that he got up early that third day morning with all power in heaven and earth yes, sir. in his hand. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Why don't we thank God for who he is and what he has already, already, already done. We serve the awesome and the amazing God. He has, he has blessed us one more again thank you, Lord. to come to this house, thank this house Lord. of prayer, this house of worship, Hallelujah. this house of praise to honor him thank you, one more time. Thank Let me call your attention to the book of Acts. Chapter 3, two verses there. I know, I, I know the Gospels are usually preached on Resurrection Sunday. But you do know the Gospel is throughout the Bible. Acts chapter 3, if you would stand for the Word of God. Acts chapter 3, verses 14 and 15 is where we are today. Acts chapter 3, verses 14 and 15. Peter said, that ain't how the story ends. <laughs> you can rejoice if you wanted. The devil was excited, but that's not how the story ends. Acts chapter 3, verses 14 and 15. You found, and I'm reading from the New King James Version. If you find it, you will discover these words. But you denied the Holy One, the just, and asked for a murderer to be granted to you and kill the prince of life whom God raised from the dead of which we are witnesses. I want to talk about whom God raised from the dead. Whom God raised from the dead. This morning, people all over the world have come together in their bright colors, in their light colors, <laughs> to recognize this great phenomenon that took place one time and one time only. Paul says that Jesus died one time for all. Yes, sir. And all was able to receive blessings from his death. Paul says that there is no greater sacrifice yes, than the one that was made on Calvary. Hallelujah. Paul goes on to talk about the fact that 
We don't know anybody who compares to this Jesus. He says that anyone who would hang on a tree, let him be a curse. And if we look into the ambush of time, we will find this one Jesus hanging between two thieves, dying on a skull hill called Calvary. Yes, sir. And this brings people together every year this time. Last year, because of COVID-19, we, we flocked on the parking lot. Just to hear this story proclaimed by two different preachers in one setting. Let me tell you, this is the great high day for Christians. If you are a Christian, if you are a Christian, then you look forward to this day. The little, the little childish song that is played is not by bunnies. It's not about an egg. It's not about an Easter basket. It's about Jesus who rose from the dead. Yes, sir. The fact of the matter, and we must remember, in all of our grandeur, this season, this celebratory season, is all about Jesus. People spend a lot of money for their children during this season. They buy stuff for them they don't buy all year round, live round. But the fact of the matter, it's not about your clothes. It's not about, we get caught up in different shaded eggs with chocolate filling, with marshmallows inside. And we celebrate that and not celebrate the death burial and resurrection of Jesus. How far have we come from the real reason why we ought to celebrate? I submit to you today in my short little Easter speech to let you know that he still lives and he lives in us. When we look at Acts chapter 3, the Bible says that Peter and John was on their way up to the temple at prayer time. And while they were on their way up to the temple, they passed by the gate called Beautiful. And when they passed by this gate called Beautiful, there was a man there that was lame and he was begging for money. I submit to you this morning that he didn't need any change in his cup. He needed a change to go on in his life. Right. Let me tell you, Peter and John begin to talk to this man. Says, look at us. And Peter says to him, silver and gold, have I none? Yes, sir. But that which I have, I give unto you. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, you, get up and walk. Now, let me tell you, folk would think that when you get blessed, people would rejoice with you. Certainly, church folk, <laughs> oh my goodness, especially church folk ought to rejoice with you. Here's this man sitting there begging for money, and as long as he was begging, people approved of it. As long as he was begging and wasn't walking, people didn't have a problem with it. But the moment Jesus blessed him, I said Jesus, I didn't say Peter, I didn't say John, but the moment he was healed by Jesus, the folk began to get a little snobbish. <laughs> the folk began to complain and they began to look at Peter and John as if they had done this great thing. Can't you hear the apostles say, why y'all looking at us as if we have done this thing? But it's only because of the name of Jesus by which this man is now walking. And let me tell you, when the brother walked, he, he didn't just walk. 
The text declares that he got up, he started jumping, and he started leaping, he started running, and he went into the church in front of church folk and began to celebrate what God had done. Verse 13 says, y'all looking at us like we've done this great thing, but he says it was only by the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of of Jacob, by which this servant is now jumping and leaping. Peter, Peter took this opportunity to preach a little bit. Let me tell you, if you give a preacher a platform, if, he, if it's preaching in him, it's going to come out of it. It's dangerous sometimes to give a preacher a microphone. It's dangerous sometimes to give a preacher an audience. Because if it's preaching in him, preaching will come out of him. He says in verse 13, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant, Jesus. In other words, when you heal, when you've been made over, when you've been renewed, it's not because you've been so holy. It's not because you dotted every I and crossed every T. It's only because God has chosen to glorify his servant. His servant, Jesus the Christ. I oftentimes tell preachers, man, you don't have to be recognized as reverend. You don't have to be recognized as deacon. You don't have to be recognized as a potentate. You don't have to be recognized as a pastor or a doctor. Because the good thing about it, when God calls you home, he won't call you by your title. He will call you by your name. And you want him to call you servant well done. But in order to be called servant well done, you have to have done well. Too many people look forward to serving well done when they have not done well. Too many people wait to the last minute to decide that they want to come to the Lord. I, I've come to the conclusion that many of us, and I said us, many of us didn't stop doing what we were doing because the Holy Spirit has indwelled in us and have sanctified us. Some of us stopped doing what we were doing because we were too old to do it anymore. What you look like out there next to your child? I remember the words of mama. Mama would say it like this, you know, mama was about, about, about 110 pounds and she was about 5'3 and, and she had no shortness of words when it came to instructions about the Lord. So mama would say to daddy, it's time to bring your old self home. Right. Whenever your children start parting where you parting, it's time for you to give it up and bring your old self on in the house. So we need to make sure that we change our hearts and change our minds because the Holy Spirit dwells in us. So this servant, Jesus, is the one who has healed you. Then he goes on to say, it is the one of which you delivered. Peter didn't mix his words. He said, you delivered up and denied the presence even before Pilate. We went to see Pilate's wife. Pilate's wife had a dream. And in the dream, she said, don't mess with this innocent man. Pilate washed his hands of it and decided that he wasn't going to deal with it. But it was a tradition every year that they would let one of them be pardoned. It was a position, it was a position every year where they would let some of the criminals go. It was a tradition every year that the governor would pardon somebody. Here was Barabbas. And here is Jesus. Barabbas, the murderer. Barabbas, the extortioner. Barabbas, the one who had killed many. Barabbas, a terrorist. They chose to let Barabbas go. And they cried, crucify, crucify, crucify Jesus. They denied the very presence of Jesus before Pilate. And when it had been determined to let Pilate go, they decided to kill Jesus. Jesus, an innocent man. Jesus, the servant of God. Jesus, 
the son of God. They decided to kill him and let the terrorists go. They decided to kill the holy one. They decided to kill the just one. They granted, they, they begged, this word granted means they begged for Barabbas. They begged to kill Jesus. They begged to pardon Barabbas. Barabbas. And an innocent man was killed instead. There's nobody like our Jesus. There is none like him. Raise your hand if you would volunteer your child yeah. no, to die for angry folk. No, Raise your hand if you would volunteer your child to die for sinful folk. Raise your hand if you're willing to sacrifice your child for the sins of the world. Let me tell you, Moses wasn't qualified. David couldn't do it. Let me tell you, Noah couldn't make it. Only Jesus could die for us. So we, we have this story. We have this pericope. We have this passage of scripture whom God raised from the dead. Peter says, the one that you denied, this word deny means you disregarded him. You refused him. And you rejected him. Peter had already messed up. Peter had already denied him. You know, sometimes we just get filled with what we call the Holy Spirit. And we just speak out of turn. And, and, and Peter began to speak out of turn and how he will always be with Jesus everywhere he goes. And, and all of a sudden, Jesus says to him, he says, before the cock crows, three times you will deny me. And let me tell you, it took place that day as they were taking him up the hill called Calvary. As Peter was warming at the wrong fire. Oh, Holy Ghost filled Peter. Oh, cussing Peter. Oh, cussing church member Peter. <laughs> was warming at the wrong fire. He was warming at the enemy's fire. And three times they came to him and said, you were one of them. You were with him. And he said three times, I don't know the man. All of a sudden, cock a doodle do. All of a sudden, the cock crowed. And Jesus didn't say a mumbling word. He just looked at him. Let me just share with you. Sometimes you know folk are in the wrong. You don't have to say a mumbling word. You just look at them. Sometimes when people have, have rejected you, sometimes they deny you, sometimes they don't do you right, all you have to do is just look at them. And this was a look of conviction, of look where Jesus looks at him and said, I told you so. Many times we think we are what we are not. So he says that you all denied him. You all put to death the Holy One. And in, 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 in the original Greek, this Holy One means the most Holy One. It means the sacred one, the saint himself, the pure one. You all killed the pure one, the most Holy One. You've killed the sacred one. You've killed the saint himself. You denied him. And then he says, he's the just one. The, the one that's righteous. The one who is innocent. I'm telling you, it was an innocent man who died for the guilty. Luke says in Luke, Luke 23, verses 33 through 34, it says that when they came to the place called Golgotha, when they came to the place of the skull, when they came to the place called Calvary, there they crucified him. One on the right and one criminal on the left. But the one that really made a difference was the man in the middle. The man in the middle was an innocent man and he died for us. The guilty. He says, y'all killed the innocent man. He says, y'all asked for Barabbas, y'all desired him, y'all asked that Jesus be crucified, y'all begged and y'all prayed for him. So here we come today, over 2,000 years later, yes, sir. asking the question, what does this mean? 
What does it mean that, that over 2,000 years ago they killed Jesus, an innocent man, and the good news is he rose from the dead on the third day? What does it mean? I, I hear you. You're asking the question. Let me just tell you seven things it means, and then I'll leave you alone. Number one, it means we must remember the crucified Christ. Yeah. I said we must remember. We must come to this place, and we should not wait till we get to this place. Every Resurrection Sunday, we must remember the crucified Christ. He was crucified for you and for me. And let me tell you, crucifixion wasn't a pretty sight. I mean, we see all these little purity movies of how they hung Jesus up and he died and they, they took him down and they put him in a, in a grave. And it's so cute. Even our Easter speeches are so pretty. But the fact of the matter is they beat him until they pull plugs of blood and plugs of skin and plugs of meat out of his body. They whipped him. Now, I'm, I'm telling you, Isaiah says it like this. Isaiah says he was bruised for our transgression. Yeah. Let me tell you, he was killed for us. And let me tell you, by his stripes we are healed. Make sure you get it contextually right. By his stripes we are healed. Not our physical healing, but our spiritual healing. He took the beating for us. He took it for our, in our place. We deserve to be dying. We deserve to be beaten. But he took the beating for us. Wasn't a pretty day. Took a cross. Marched up Calvary's here. The hymnologist asked the question this morning. Must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? No, there's a cross for you and there's a cross for me. Somebody had a cross just getting up this morning. <laughs> Somebody had a cross just getting here this morning. Somebody had a cross just getting their, their mind in gear to make it to church this morning. Somebody had a cross just to turn on their device to listen to church this morning. That's not a cross. The cross is the fact that Jesus rose and he got up and down with the cross. Not because it was so heavy with the wood. It was because it was so heavy with our sins. He carried our sins on us. And we're doing the same thing that they did in Jesus' day. We're asking to pardon those who are criminals and let, let the criminals go free. How do you, what are you talking about, preacher? Every time we deny Jesus, every time we don't act like Jesus would have us to act, every time we don't think like Jesus would have us to think, every time that we won't do what Jesus would have us to do, we deny his very presence. We're saved. We're on our way to heaven. We're, we're, we're glorified. But when Jesus asked us to do just a little something, right. we deny him. The, 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 the Bible teaches that Jesus got up early from the dead. And if Jesus got up early from the dead, at least every Sunday, 52 days a week, you ought to get up early from the bed. If he got up early from the dead, we ought to be able to get up early from the bed. My first point to you is remember Jesus, the crucified Christ. They crucified him. They, they, they maimed him. They beat him. They spit in his face. They plucked hairs out of his face. Jesus. My second point to you is there must be reflection on the sacrificial lamb. We must have reflection. We must reflect every year this time. And we ought not wait to this time of year. But especially during this year, we ought to spend our time. It's not just a good Friday off. It's not just time to, time to relax. It's a time of reflection. We need to reflect on the fact that the crucified Christ gave his life voluntarily for us. We must reflect on, on this, this crucified, this, this, this sacrificial lamb. Jesus had paid the price over 2,000 years ago. 
You see, before Jesus came along, they would use dove, they would use goat, and then uh, the priest would come out and he would lay his hand on top of the goat's head and he would transfer the sins of the people to the goat and the goat would take off running through the wilderness. It was an indication that the goat has taken their sins and, and taken them far away from them. And there came the word scapegoat. He was the scapegoat for all of mankind. But let me just share with you today the sacrificial lamb Jesus Christ himself. We don't need any more scapegoats. We don't need any more doves. We don't need any more crucifixion. Over 2,000 years ago, he became the sacrificial lamb for us. And he didn't say a moment. We ought to reflect on that. We ought, to, we ought to reflect on the fact that he's the sacrificial lamb. The third thing I want to say to you today is that repentance of our sins is in order. Repentance, repentance, repentance of our sin. Repentance means to turn away from. Repentance means to change your mind. Repentance means to leave alone what you used to do. And I know you have a sin nature in you, and I do too. And you can think about the good old days when you were able to do what you used to do. Can you remember the good old days when you, when you did? Don't reflect so much on the good old days. Reflect on the fact that we, are, can, we can now repent of our sins. We can change our minds because Jesus died for us on Calvary. Fourth thing I want to say to you today, it's a time for renewal. It's a time to renew our commitment to the almighty God. It's a time for renewal. It's a time for, for us to say now, self, you know you hadn't been doing the right thing. It's a time for us to say, self, even though you've been doing the right thing, you know you could have done better. It's a time for renewal. It's a time for our souls, our hearts to be turned toward God in such a way that we have a renewed attitude, a renewed spirit, a renewed disposition. And people ought to see that disposition. They ought to see your attitude different. They ought to say, man, I remember you when. And the moment they say they remember you when, let them know that when is no longer present now. Because I've been renewed by the presence of God. And therefore, I'm further committed. I'm renewed in my commitment to follow Jesus all the way. Back home, we used to have testimony service. Every second Sunday, we have testimony service, and, and one by one, and they, that's when they taught children how to speak in church. That's, that's when they brought children up, and children didn't have a choice, but you're going to say something today. And then when they stood, they, they would have something to say about the Lord. And, and we've done a terrible job of passing that from one generation to the other, and now children don't want to speak in church, won't speak in church, because they have not been obligated to speak. We didn't have a choice. Every child on, on, set, on second Sunday, every child left home knowing, I got to give my testimony. Even if you repeated what somebody else said, you had to stand there. Let me tell you, we have to understand it's only at the church that our children are able to learn how to speak in board's room and in executive board's room, know how to deliver their message. It's because the church will set up a foundation for their lives. So we have to get to a point where we understand that children are made the better because of their participation. Children are made the better because they, get, they are given an opportunity. Children, let me tell you, if we don't give them an opportunity in the church house, the devil is not waiting. The devil has something for them. And it glitters, and it shines, and it's pretty, and it walks the right way, and it's shaped the right way. The devil has something for them, and it doesn't matter if your baby is zero or 100. The devil has something for them. The St. Peter, the St. Peter that's standing, Jesus says, the devil has asked for you. The devil is after you. The devil wants you. The devil desires you. So you can think your baby is pretty as long as they got blood that's red running through their veins. The devil wants them. Good thing about it, Jesus said, I prayed for you. <laughs> I prayed for you and, and that your faith will not fail. I prayed for you. In other words, we have to walk in faith. 
God wants to renew us. God wants to make us different. God wants us to be more committed to him than committed to them. Al Sharpton tells the story, and, and you've probably seen it too. He talks about, Reverend Al Sharpton talks about, he, he got his mom at a point where she didn't supposed to shout that Sunday. You see, his mom, his mom knew how to shout. She, she knew how to praise the Lord. When the choir got good, she would slip to the edge of her seat. And when the preaching got good, she would start rocking from side to side. And before you know it, she's on her feet and she's running around the room and she's, she's really putting on some things and she's, she's letting the Lord have his way in her. So Al Shopping knew that, that that was his mom's M.O., that's what she did. So he began to focus her and make sure she did not embarrass him. He said, Mama, I tell you what, I got some friends coming to church with me today. And I, I tell you what, now, Mama, I, I want you to be cool. I don't, I don't want you to shout like you always shout. I don't, I don't want you to slip to the edge of the seat. I don't want you to rock from side to side. I, I don't want you to stand up and run around the room. I have some friends showing up. She said, I hear you, baby. But when the song got good... As Sharpton's mama slid to the edge of the seat, she began to rock from side to side. And before he knew it, she was running around the room and his friend was just gazing at her. But it's when Al Sharpton had an experience himself. It was when, let me tell you, when your young folk go through some things. They'll be, they'll, they'll be able to be more committed to what God has them to do. Al Sharpton says, says somebody tried to take his life. He had to go to the hospital. The doctor came in, patched him up, and he said to the nurse, now you're going to be on 24-7 20, watch, and don't let him get up. Don't let him move. Don't let him get out to bed. Bring him a bedpan if he need it. Whatever you do, don't let him move. But Al Sharpton realized that he was still living. He realized that God was still protecting him. And before he knew it, he slid to the edge of the bed. He, he started rocking from side to side. And before you know it, he was running around the room. Let me tell you, when you're committed to God and you realize that God is committed to you, you will do some things you don't normally do. And, and, and you wonder, you wonder just like I used to wonder as a child. I, I used to wonder as a child. Why every time? I mean, not just one time. Every Sunday they start singing Amazing Grace. I, I, mama is crying. Dad, dad is weeping. And big mama and big daddy is crying. And, and the man that walked in with a cane, he's no longer walking on the cane. Every time the preacher get ready to preach, they were saying Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that, that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost and now I'm found. Now you got tears and snot all over the place. I understand a little better now. <laughs> I, 18 hours of life support for me was enough for me to understand that what, what amazing grace really means. What God, what it means is God protects us and God keeps us in spite of us. And therefore, I've come to the point where I'm committed to God. Don't be a sellout. Be an all out. Be an all out for God. It says, we ought to have a renewal of our commitment. We don't just come to church on Sunday, Wednesday, Tuesday, whatever your church day is, or Saturday, just so we can see who's there. Just so people can see what you got on. Just so people can, can act like they, they really like you when they really don't. Just so people can hug you with that little Christian hug and, and, and you think that everything is all right when they're hugging you and they got a knife in your back. Let me just share with you. We didn't just show up for that reason. We have shown up because we are committed to the Lord and we know that God keeps us. He blesses us. He walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me I am his own. I'm committed. So my next thing to you today is the resurrection means that Jesus has remitted our sins. Whenever you have a person that's in sickness, not just cancer, but we, we, we identify with cancer, when you have a person who, whose cancer is no longer plaguing them and the doctor can't find it, we say their cancer is in remission. Let me tell you, over 2,000 years ago, <laughs> Jesus the Christ... <laughs> Set your sins on a road <laughs> to be in remission. In other words, your sin doesn't have control over you anymore. He has canceled your sin. He has shut down your sin because he died for you over 2,000 years ago. 
Are your sins in remission? Or are you just sin at will? <laughs> Anytime somebody cuts you off, do you say, God bless them in the name of Jesus? <laughs> it, it, you know, in, in Houston, you got to be really, really born again. <laughs> Just to drive in Houston. You, you, don't even, you, don't even, you don't even have to go on the freeway. Some people say they can't drive on the freeway. You don't have to get on the freeway in Houston. In, in Houston, everybody's in a hurry, and they, then when they get in front of you, they turn right, out, right off the road. Let me tell you, in Houston, you need to be born again. Your sins need to be remitted simply because your sins will make you do some things that you will regret. Thank God for the remission, the wiping away of our sins. Thank God for the removal of our sins. My sixth thing to you today is this is an opportunity for a rededication to the Lord who has saved us. It's an opportunity for rededication. This is a moment that you can really, really say, Lord, I give up. You can really... Dedicate yourself to him like never before. And then you can tell the Lord, Lord, I, I messed up over and over again with the same thing. The same man and the same woman. Maybe y'all didn't get that. Let me tell you. Sir. Lord, I messed up with the same thing. With the same man and with the same woman. In other words, Lord, I put my faith in him. I put my faith in her. I put my faith in them. I've even put my faith in it. But now, Lord, I surrender unto you. I, I, I say, Lord, I dedicate myself unto you. Lord, I surrender unto you because there is no other God like you, Lord. And you can wipe away all of my sin. And because you've saved me, I'm grateful. Because you have changed me, I'm grateful. Because you have rearranged my life, I'm grateful. My final thing to you today, and I'll leave you alone, let you go do what you do, get you some rest, is regeneration is a thing for the heart. This is a season for regeneration of the heart. It's, it is a thing that we can, we can pass on from generation to generation. We can be regenerated. Our minds, our hearts needs to be regenerated, made over and over again. You see, salvation is that one time, that one time acceptance of Jesus Christ as your Savior. When you believe the story that he died, was buried, rose again, that one time commitment to be born again. But sanctification is regeneration. It is creating over and over again, sanctification. There, there's a regeneration plan, a power plan. There's a power plan. And at the power plant, it sends power out. And then it, it, it has a, a, a combine or, or it has some kind of compressor. Or it has something that, that regenerates it. Regenerates it. It regenerates it. Let me tell you, our lives must be lives that are regenerated every day. You see, they killed, the text declares, you killed the prince of life. You killed the prince of life. In other words, this word prince of life is the master. You killed the one who offers life, and he offers life more abundantly. You killed the prince of life. And because you killed the prince of life, you need to understand that you will not have life until you accept him until you walk with him, until you, you are blessed of him. He is the prince of life whom God raised from the dead. There are people walking around on planet Earth today that's just existing. They're just, they're just existing. Every time I see a young man, a young woman that's, who have no goals, they're not in school, they have no future, they're just hanging out. And as they hang out, they just kind of let life pass them by. You don't have to keep living that way. Your life can be made the better. But you cannot be made the better without the prince himself, the prince of life. You can't be made the better without the holy one himself. 
without Jesus himself, without the righteous one, the, the, the just one himself. His name is Jesus, whom God, this self-existing God, this exceeding God, this, this deity God, this divinity, the supreme divinity God, and this self-existing God raised him from the dead. He was all the way dead. He had no breath. He had no life. He was all the way dead in the tomb. Peter says to these, these so-called church folk, he said to them, you have chosen to kill him rather than to kill a terrorist. You have chosen to kill Jesus. And he says, but God raised him from the dead. And it says, and all of us walking around, all of us who are talking are witnesses to it. In other words, in, in other words, Jesus died because he was human. But he rose early that third mo day morning because he's God. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, he, he was killed because he was human. But he rose early that third day morning <laughs> because he is God. He is God. He always will be God. He, he's, he will always be God. There's no, no separation from him and God. He is God. And over 2,000 years ago, they, he took a tree, I tell you. He marched up Calvary's hill. My Lord and your God. His name is Jesus. He died, I tell you, on a skull hill called Calvary. He died, I tell you. To the earth reeled and rocked like a drunken man. He died, I tell you, until the S-U-N refused to shine. He died, I tell you, because the S-O-N was shining. He died on a skull hill called Calvary. After he died, they pierced him in his side. Out came blood and water. He died for you and for me. They took him off the cross, I tell you. They laid him in Joseph's brand new tomb. It was a barber tomb because he didn't need it too long. He, they laid him in Joseph's brand new tomb. He stayed there all day Friday. He stayed there all day, all day Saturday. He stayed there all night Saturday. But early that Sunday morning, he got up with all power. He got up with all power. He rose with all power in heaven and earth. My heart has been regenerated. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. That same Jesus caught a cloud, got out of here, went on back to heaven. He's sitting on the right hand of the Father, making intercessions for you and for me. That same Jesus is coming back again. He's not coming in a limousine. He's coming on a cloud, and he will stop in midair, and the dead in Christ yeah. shall join him over there. Hallelujah. 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 Don't you want to go? Yeah. Will you go with me? Yeah. I'm on my way yeah. to the rapture where the wicked yeah. will cease from trouble, yeah. where the weary yeah. will be no more. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where every day. Yeah will be Resurrection Sunday. Yeah. Hallelujah to the Lamb. No more crying. Yeah. No more dying. No more suffering. Yeah. Over there where Jesus is, yeah. we will praise him all the day long. You might as well practice down here because over there, oh, over there, yeah. he will be the light to the city. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Yeah. Hallelujah to the Lamb. We glorify you. We magnify you. We lift you, Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 If you don't see me tomorrow, that's all right. I'm on my way yeah. to the other side. Yeah. I'm going over yonder yeah. where the wicked yeah. will be no more. No more backstabbing. No more lying. Over yonder where Jesus is. The Jesus, Jesus, whom God raised from the dead. <laughs> hallelujah to the Lamb. I said hallelujah to the Lamb. The crucified Lamb. The resurrected Lamb. 
He's coming back to get us. He's coming to get a church without a spot or wrinkle. Hallelujah to the Lamb. He's coming back to get us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb. The story is told that a big brother, a big brother tied his brother, his little brother, to a tree in the forest. And he said, brother, whatever you do, stay here until I get back. He said, can you trust me? I'm coming back to get you. He said, yeah, I trust you. He tied that little boy to the tree. And when he tied him to the tree, Brother Carter, strong wind blew. Rain and storms came. But that boy kept holding that tree. Dogs showed up. He kept holding the tree. Wolves and bears showed up. He kept holding the tree. One day, the Brook brother came back. And the big brother said, man, I saw the storm over here. And I was concerned about you. He said, but you tell me to stay here until you got back. And I stayed here. And thank God you're coming back. He untied that boy. Took him home with him. And they celebrated the obedience of the little boy. I stopped by here to tell you. On my way to the rapture. That my big brother. Jesus himself. He left me in this world. Dark clouds has come. Let me tell you something. I got to stay here till he gets back. And one of these days, at the trump of God, Jesus will crack the sky. And the dead in Christ shall rise. And all of us who remain shall be caught up. We'll be caught up. We'll be caught up. We'll be caught up in midair. And the Bible says, we will forever, we will forever, forever be with the Lord. I don't know what they're going to sing over there. But the text declares, he's the Holy One. And if I can't sing another note, brother, I just have to sing this word. Holy, 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 holy is the Lamb. That was slain from the foundation of the world. Good evening, warriors. I'll see you on the other side. Don't worry about me. I'm going on the other side where God is and where God can keep us. Don't you want to go? If you've never received Jesus as your personal Savior, this is your moment. You can get to know him right here, right now. The door is open. Try him. You tried her. You've tried him. You've tried them. You've tried it. Now try Jesus. Today is a good day to trust him. The door is open. If you can believe the story, the story that Christians are celebrating all over this world, that over 2,000 years ago, Jesus died on Calvary. You can be saved right here, right now in this room. Birds don't have to fly. Birds don't have to sing. But what you must do is repentantly believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And out of obedience unto God, he gave his life as a ransom for you and me. If you can believe the story that he died, he was buried in Joseph's brand new tomb, that he rose from the dead. And if you can trust that story to get you to heaven, this is your moment. 
You want to try him. The door is open. This is your moment. This is your opportunity. If you would, just bow your head with me and invite him into your life by just repeating this simple prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul in Jesus' name. We believe if you pray this prayer, honestly believing in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we believe that you're born again and that you're on your way to heaven when you die. If you're here in this room or on the broadcast and you, you're looking for a church home, it's a church home that I recommend, and it is the New Beginning Church, Southeast Houston. We have global members as well as local members. If you're listening live, just inbox us and let us know that you want to be a part of the New Beginning Church. And those of you who struggle with sin like I do, <laughs> those of you who every time you would to do good, sin is present with you. I want to pray for you for rededication, for repentance, for renewal, for reflection as we remember the crucified Christ pray that our sins are remitted and our hearts are regenerated Father God we thank you now God we bless you and we honor you Lord we admit that we are wrong and you're right we ask you to forgive us bless our lives bless our focus regenerate our hearts Bless us to hold on to the Jesus Christ that God raised from the dead. That we will be faithful and committed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. And we thank God for who he is and what he's already done. He is the mighty God. He has blessed us again. He walks with us. He talks with us. And he tells us that we are his own. Thank God for who he is. Yes, Lord. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Give your life to him. Yeah. Yeah, Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. It is offering time. It's time for us to give to God through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. It is offering time. It is offering time. If you need an envelope, raise your hand. There are two envelopes, one which is blue and white for tithes and offering, and the second one is red and white for, for uh, pastor's love offering. You have, Braylon, have one over here. Why don't we thank God for the privilege of giving? I'm telling you, it's a privilege to give to God. It's an honor to give to God. We, we thank God for the honor and the privilege to give to him. Y'all don't sound excited about giving to God. It's, let me tell you, it's an honor to give to him. It's a, it's a privilege. God has granted us one more time. He's granted us another time.